And that being said, for you guys that, um, that maybe came in after we started the lecture, I normally have a slate gray background when I'm in Atlanta and doing these courses. And we're in Orlando in a game room. So we've got the Marvel comic folks with us. So we've got Spider-Man on this wall, which you can't see. Uh, we've got some guy that I don't even know who he is on to my right. And then we've got uh, Captain America and the Hulk here behind me. So hope you guys enjoy that. But uh, some of you guys might be thinking, what in the world is he doing in that room? So <laughs> that's the answer to that question. Make sure I've looked at all these. So Keith had a question, is there full frication exposure but minimum bone loss? Otherwise, you still extract. And that's, uh, that's a good question, Keith. The frication bone loss, if, the, if it's exposed, the, the roots have either imbibed the bacteria and the dentin has been the transfer agent for the pulp to die because of those exposed roots, or when the cementum dies over those roots when they're exposed, sometimes the body takes care of that and deposits tertiary dentin on those roots and seals them itself. So you have to look at the radiograph and see, make sure there's no periapical lucency, make sure there's no increase in pulp cavity diameter. And if those things are not present, then that tooth, at least at that point in time, is viable. And uh, the other thing that you wanna make sure of is that the gingiva looks good. Uh, so if all, those if all those things are fine, then that tooth doesn't need to be extracted. But if there's bone loss and there's uh, inflammation and there's uh, changes in the gingiva, then extraction is the way to go unless you want to refer that for a, an apically positioned flap where we actually do the same thing that the body does when it takes care of that frication by causing the gum to recede back uh, to the bone level. So that's a, that's a procedure that can be done if it's not a real functional tooth, if it's a premolar or a uh, aside from the fourth upper premolar, if it's a premolar uh, in the upper arcade, the second or third, or if it's the fourth, third, or second in the mandible, we wouldn't really consider that. Those are not teeth that we'd be doing uh, that type of procedure on to save. But if it's a mandibular first molar, um, we could we could certainly certainly justify doing a procedure like that. But again, that thing that needs to be maintained. So the bone loss that was, has, is there is not going to stop just because of us doing that procedure. The periodontal condition that that patient has is still present. We're eliminating all the factors right now, but at the same time, that, if, if that goes untreated and, unle and, and just left to its own device, it will progress. So um, we need to get that patient back every, usually every six months and clean really, really nicely, reevaluate the radiographs and make sure that we're keeping on top of that. 